The Bible says that Jesus will be our judge. So, for example, in John uh, 5, verses 26 to 30, it says, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Hmm. So do you see yourself as the judge of mankind? No, definitely not. I am definitely not the judge of mankind. This uh, Bible verse is false, completely false, and was added after my death. I never stated it. Um, it was something that was added because it was what people and many of my disciples wanted me to be. And, and quite frequently during my life on earth, many of my disciples wanted to force me into actions that I did not wish to take. Mm -hmm. And then after my passing, they wanted to write about actions that I supposedly would take sometime in the future that I did not wish to take. And um, it is also very con inconsistent about my character because this particular verse states that I have accepted the role of judgment from God. However, if you look at other Bible verses, it's quite clear that I have, uh, have not accepted such a role. And in fact, uh, in other Bible verses uh, that we, we can examine, I've, I've said to people that they should not judge themselves and that I do not have the right to judge either. And in fact, perhaps if I could just mention a few of them, for mm -hmm. example, uh, the right to judge themselves, I've said in Matthew 7, one to, uh, verse 1 and 2, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way as you judge, uh, as you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So I've said to people, don't judge. Now, it'd be very hypocritical of me as a leader to judge people when I'm saying to any followers to not judge people. Yeah. That, would be a, that would be a pinnacle of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And it's not, uh, hypo, 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 hypocritical actions are not what I take. In uh, Luke 12, it says that uh, somebody in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge? Right? So in other words, I'm saying to him, like, I'm not your judge. You know? yeah. I'm not the person who's going to judge these matters. And in John 3.17, it says, For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. I didn't come to condemn the world, never have, never will. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the thing. I came, I came to present to the world the principles of what can save your soul or what actually transforms you into a new being. In fact, what the process of being born again is all about. That's why I came. And then in John 13, um, or, or sorry, 12, 47 and 48, I say to people, but as for the person who hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge him. And I don't. That's how I feel. Yeah. If, if you listen to my words and you don't want to do it, that's fine. I've got, I got no problems with you. I know the way the universe works is that anybody who listens to these words and actually does them will benefit immensely from their actions. Anybody who listens to these words and does nothing about them eventually will benefit, but not immensely, not, not to the great uh, ability that we have if we connect to God. We can still benefit, we can still grow, we can still change, we can still have a happy life, but it's not going to be anywhere near as happy mm -hmm. as what it's possible when, you've got a when you're in the condition of atonement with God. And then I say, um, there is a judge for the one who rejects me. And it's not me. Mm. Uh, it's God. So and God's laws judge people. Like every, God's laws are judging people every single day. Every single day. Anything that you do out of harmony with love is automatically judged and, and the soul is automatically written in it. The compensation, if you like, the, 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 the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The... The reason, the, the penalty or the effect, the effect of yeah. what, of breaking that particular law. So, so you know, every time I break a particular law of God, the effect of the breaking of law is in my soul immediately, mm -hmm. and 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 in that way, I'm judged. Um, it's not something that happens at some kind of death or when I die or once I'm resurrected or any of those kind of things, as the Bible suggests. Now I know that, and I knew that in the first century. So I would never say 
words to the contrary. I, so what you're saying is, because this, the Bible depicts you as a future judge often, doesn't it? That you will come back to judge. Yeah. So there's a, there's a large belief in this or, or a depiction that there is a future day of judgment uh, or when we pass or when you come back, that's when judgment will happen. But yeah. from what you're saying, not you're saying it's already happening. It's already happening. Every single moment it's happening. Mm. We're, we're being basically judged every single moment of our lives because every single action we take, the way God's created the universe is the, the compensatory effect of every single action we take is automatically written on our souls. We can't avoid it. We're not going to ever avoid it. Mm -hmm. And there's only two ways to process it. One is through what's called the law of compensation, which is a slow, laborious way of working through every single thing that you've done wrong, or the law of repentance, which is a very fast, rapid way of self-analysis and seeing everything that you've done wrong personally. And and wanting to be forgiven for what you've done wrong. They're the two different ways that I taught in the first century that I've taught the last 2,000 years. I also have taught people right from the time when I was in the first century, as you know, the principles of free will, the principles of the ability to make a choice, the principles that the choices we make will have a bearing on our future life, both on earth and in the spirit world. These principles do not require any judgment on my part. They do not require anything. God is so perfect and God is so clever that God does not need some archaic, arbitrary judgment system in order to enforce God's laws or in, in order to have control of the universe. Mm -hmm. And people need to give up these flawed human concepts of God and receive some of God's love so that they can understand the true concepts about God, which are far greater than anything the majority of people can imagine at yeah. this point in time on earth. So I feel, again, this verse, this verse in John 5, 26 to 30, is just another one of these verses that were added. They were added as a combination of the concept of my disciples and what they wanted to believe and future modifications made to the Bible after my, after my death. And remember, the Bible wasn't, the, the, Greek, the, the New Testament was not written at the time of my death. Yeah. So, so these are all things written after my death where people were relating about something and saying things about something and so forth that, that were not my words, but which they put into my mouth. And unfortunately, nowadays, many people believe erroneously. Mm. If a person analyzes my true character and nature, they would never believe such words. But unfortunately, most people are so disconnected from my true character and nature because they are disconnected from God's true character and nature mm -hmm. They, they believe such things readily. Yeah. And the reason, one of the reasons why they believe such things readily is because this is how they're taught from the time they're born on earth, that their parents are their judges. Yeah. Their parent is the person that's going to come along and condemn them or say that they're good people depending on what they do. This is a, this is a human concept of love, which is very flawed from God's perspective. And, uh, but it's imposed upon God and myself mm -hmm. And both of us have no, you know, we, we have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, these are flawed human concepts that need to be given up. And there are parts of the Bible that really need to be almost discounted completely mm -hmm. um, because they do not contain any love in them. And they also do not contain any justice in them. And they are also hypocritical. Mm. That, you know, I'm actually advising people to do things that I'm not prepared to do myself. Now, what God would institute a system that one of his sons can do get away with murder, because that's what they're saying that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to kill the wicked, then I'm a murderer. Mm. And what, what, the, what these people who are Christian are saying is that one son, Jesus, is allowed to get away with murder. Well, I suppose <laughs> they view you as God, do they? I so understand that. So they're basically saying God's allowed God's to get scared, away with murder. Yeah. And this is why many of them believe they are allowed to let, get away with murder and that's why many of them go to war. But mm -hmm. it's all false. Mm -hmm. It's all out of harmony with the truth about God. It's all out of harmony with the truth about love. Mm -hmm. And when they pass over in the spirit world as a murderer, they'll soon find that out. Yeah. They'll realise that all of this self-justification of war, all of this justification about you know, being able to kill somebody else for, the, for God's sake is all false mm -hmm. and it's all in error and it's all out of harmony with love and, and also... Every time they do it, there's a penalty on their soul for doing it. There's a consequence on their soul for their actions that are taken out of harmony with love. If they knew that, they'd never believe a lot of these things. Yeah. 
and, uh, and unfortunately sometimes it has been better for people to not believe them than believe them. Yeah. Because, yeah. It, because to believe something that is false is a more difficult proposition than not believing anything at all. Mm. If you believe something that's false, you've got to give up the false thing to accept the truth. If you don't believe anything at all, there's nothing to give up in order to accept the truth. Yeah, sure. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you.